Hey guys, welcome to my studio. I spent almost the entire day helping a friend to mix one of his tracks. Now I have a business meeting, so today no music. I will concentrate entirely on testing the new Canon ESM5. <laughs> I'm all done with the meeting here in this building. It was just a boring music business meeting that I'm anyways not allowed to talk about. It's now quite late, so I hope there's still enough time with sunlight to make a couple of really nice cinematic shots. Love's, love's, love's Shooting today is a battle against the sun. When the sun is going down, I'm going up pretty high. But the view is amazing and there's still a little bit of sunlight left, so enjoy. In the apple blossoms and fields of wildflowers. I think we can all agree that the picture quality is really amazing for videos. What I don't get is why Canon built in the flip down screen, so it's always in between a view and the tripod, so I actually can't see myself. I don't know why they did it. It doesn't make any sense to me. It just has this one advantage that when you're looking onto the screen, it doesn't look like you're looking onto the screen. It still looks like you're having eye contact with the lens and with you. If the screen is up, you can definitely see when someone is looking onto the screen. So there is now no need anymore for having 24-7 sunglasses on while vlogging. It has full HD slow motion in 60p, which is nice to have, but the Sony cameras are way better in regards of that. They just don't have a flip down or flip up screen at all. So they're absolutely worthless for vlogging. The autofocus is really amazing. You don't really have to worry about it at all. It also shoots really good in low light. As you can see, it's usable. So definitely a good all around camera. Just this flip down situation is a bit annoying, but I have a solution for that. Another advantage of this camera is that I can just put the microphone on top and actually use the hot shoe with the M3. It wasn't possible because the screen flips up. So I had to put something to the side to attach the mic. I don't get why they didn't build in a screen that flips to the side. This would make this camera way more versatile and way better for vlogging. Probably just to have a reason to sell the 7D and 80D. I'm now in the city center. I actually didn't really have anything to eat today, so it's time to pick up Vanessa from work and just have something really good. It's so cold outside, I just have to go inside and already get some small little snacks. They always have some sweet stuff laying around. I already got a little bit. Mm, nah, so. <laughs> this should do it for the next five minutes. What are we eating tonight? Is you joking, maybe? No, no, no. The sweet stuff is all gone. So what do you want to eat for dinner? Still chidoki. But yeah, what I wanted you to want take to you out to a nice place. Okay, so to what place? Not dinner, really a nice place. Okay. Maybe Where? maybe this Italian place. Which one? Um Dinner was really amazing. Can you believe that we had some real proper dinner? home I've looked at all of the footage and I have to say I can't really see a big difference or any difference at all to the Canon ESM3 they have the same sensor 
maybe the dynamic range is a little bit better on the Canon ESM5 but it's definitely not worth the price difference between those two cameras. I've switched now to the M3. Uh, this right here is the M5. They almost look identical except for the electronic viewfinder. The material is really nice. The handling is really good. Just really this flip down thing. I don't get it. Like to the side would be so great. You could still use a tripod and film yourself. I think that's essential for a vlogging camera. That's also the main reason why I don't like filming with it. It's, it's super annoying if you can't even see if it's recording. The kit lens isn't really good, but that's normal for a kit lens. What I didn't know buying these kind of lenses the first time is that you actually have to extend them. That's what they look like in the product pictures. And I thought that's the actual size but you have to put them into the shooting mode and then this part sticks out for the entire time. So if you zoom out, zoom in, that's the movement. And I feel a little bit like they cheated. The electronic viewfinder is just amazing. I don't really use it a whole lot for taking videos, but whenever I take a picture, it's just really nice to have. And with the M3, you had to buy this additional adapter, which really looked awkward and was so expensive that it's actually worth it to get the M5. The biggest selling point for me was actually the autofocus. They built in the same as in the 70 and 80D. You can just tap to focus, it has face recognition and it's a lot faster than on the M3 but with the face recognition they're almost the same. The M3 also detects my face very well and I had today a couple of situations where the M5 just got it entirely wrong and tapping didn't even fix it also pressing the button didn't work so I had to switch to manual mode to get it right also I don't know if you can hear it but this camera is doing like a lot of noise trying to get the focus right that's something the M3 doesn't do at all I also changed the settings but you still have the noise of the focus it doesn't get picked up by the external mic but it gets definitely picked up by the internal mics, which are just as expected terrible. You will definitely need an external mic to film outside to get rid of the wind noise and also to have a more directional sound. By the way, I also tested the preamps here in the M5 and M3 and I have to say in the M5 they are a lot better. You have a lot less noise, but still a bit of noise is left and the preamps are still worse than, for example, in the Sony cameras. All in all, this is a really great camera. You get amazing quality in a very compact, small form. You also get this adapter with the camera, so you can use all of your other Canon lenses that you already have. For video, I have to give it to the Sony cameras. The Sony A6300 is almost the same price, has a little bit better picture quality, is a bit more compact, has 4K and better slow motion. For vlogging, I still, I still really don't like this flip down thing. I found only one solution online where you put in between here an adapter so that this part is extended and then you add your tripod but it's not really a pretty solution and so far the only one I could come up with. But if you're vlogging handheld like this, this might actually be the best vlogging camera on the market. The flip down screen actually even helps. It presses against your hand, stabilizes everything, you can see yourself. So for this case, it's, it's really perfect. This is definitely by far the best mirrorless camera from Canon but I feel like it's, it's dated. It should have been released like a year ago or one and a half years ago. Sony has now built in body stabilization 4K. The Panasonic GH5 was just released and is way better than this and the price difference isn't actually that big. If you're interested in a more affordable setup, just go with the M3. The difference on autofocus isn't that big. You still have the same picture quality, you can attach an external mic and use a really wide lens. I actually made an entire video about my M3 setup that I will also use in the future. This one is definitely going back. This isn't mine, a friend just borrowed it to me to test it out and check out if the preamps are better. And it's for me definitely not worth it to spend twice as much just for the better autofocus and then having to deal with this.
for the entire day. If you're interested in my M3 setup, there is a video already available that I will link up at the end of this one where I explain you which mic I'm using, which lens and how I'm daily vlogging with it. There is also another video available where I'm testing it and also do like some cinematic shots so you can actually compare the picture quality between those two. This one is going back, this isn't actually mine, a friend just lent it to me, but it's definitely not worth it for me to spend more than twice as much for these changes. I will definitely test out the GH5 and I just hope Sony will one day release a camera with interchangeable lens and a screen that actually flips to the side or up. I mean, I get that it's impossible to have an EVF and a flip up screen, but why down, why not to the side? Or maybe it would be really great if someone would include like a little screen here at the front where you can check out yourself so you won't have to flip, swivel, anything because these systems, they don't really look stable and really usable on a daily basis. I think Vanessa's really hungry. Usually when we pass by these kind of shopping windows, it takes way longer. Uh, I've been here today already, so... Okay, so you know everything. 